The Boston Celtics are 31 and 9, so I just want to put some wholesome content on your feed. This was Dennis Schroeder's jersey that he gave to Jason Tatum after the Celtics beat the Raptors. And in case you can't read it, it basically just says, Go get that chip this year. Brody for life. P.S. Top five. Good to know Dennis Schroeder loves Jason Tatum as much as we do. So if you want the Boston Celtics to win Banner 18 this year, led by Jason Tatum, like this video. Thirty-one and nine doesn't sound that bad. However, with the NBA trade deadline, there have been a few questions as to whether or not Brad Stevens is going to beef up the bench, if he's going to help go get some wing depth, or overall just make some tweaks to the very good Boston Celtics roster this year. However, one thing that Smitty and I decided to talk about today is the buyout market. Potentially getting some players after that deadline does pass. Maybe some of that nice NBA rumors have settled down. But we're going to talk about five players the Celtics could pick up after that deadline that could help solve the Celtics' problems without all the hassle of hitting that February 8th deadline. But here's the thing. The catch is that Boston is over the second tax apron, so they cannot sign anyone over the taxpayer mid-level exception, any player making about $12.4 million. This is where it makes it a little bit harder for the Boston Celtics to make any kind of internal moves this season. There's no Gordon Hayward, nobody like that. So it's just one of those things where you're going to have to be very strategic with your money because the Boston Celtics technically have six starters on their roster, which I love. The bench can be a little iffy at times. So that's why I think the buyout market is key for the Boston Celtics to win Banner 18 this year. So let's just go on ahead and jump into it. Our first player that Smitty and I think could be a big contender for the Boston Celtics, the player the Celtics just played and beat, Thaddeus Young. He's been around the league forever, and there's a reason why he's a good ball player. Offensively, he can tend to be a little shaky here and there, but the reason why we like Thaddeus Young the best is because of his defense. And as you know, we've got two great centers in the Boston Celtics this year. we got Al Horford, we have Chris Dance Porzingis. Thaddeus Young can get up there with the kind of veteran experience those two bring. So it's a sound decision maker. He's veteran leadership and voice in the locker room. Kind of gives me that Blake Griffin vibe when you really think about his veteran leadership that he could bring at a big age there. He's a 17-year pro, 35 years old. Not nearly as old as Al Horford, but he can still move with the NBA bigs and put the ball in the cup. And like I said... 113.2 defensive rating, fantastic, phenomenal. I would take that anytime, especially in the fact that Joe Mazzulla has been doing this thing this season where Chris Asporzingis sits a game, Al Warford sits a game. He's really holding on to keeping those two players healthy when it does come playoff time. But we have seen Luke Cornett grow, I will admit, but maybe Thaddeus Young could be that extra player that could play night in and night out because you're not necessarily worried about his minutes in the playoff time. So I do think Thaddeus Young could potentially be a very secret player in the NBA after the trade deadline. The Celtics could go on ahead, go on in and swoop in and take. But I want to ask you guys first and foremost, should the Boston Celtics target Thaddeus Young at all? Are we just spitting out into the air here? Do you guys see what we're saying in the sense that this is a dynamic defender that could potentially level the Celtics up just a little bit? Type Y for yes, type N for no down in the comments below. And while you guys are doing that, we have a lot more targets to touch touch on, but I do want to tell you guys about Prize Picks, the number one daily fantasy sports app in America right now, and there's a reason for that. This is the most exciting, thrilling app that I have on my phone. I play this literally every single game day, probably a little more than I should, but it just makes it so easy to win up to 25 times your money on any entry. Why? Because they have NFL, NBA, MLB, numerous sports categories, and all you have to do is pick between two to six players and just pick more or less on their projected stats, and you can win yourself some real money in real time, especially with the NFL playoffs here. I do have Brock Purdy having more than 266 and a half passing yards, but I had to give Jordan Love some love. No pun intended. With more than 249 and a half passing yards as well. These are my picks for Sunday's game, but I do Saturday's game, excuse me, but I do want to see yours. All you guys have to do is go to prizepicks.com slash C L N S. Use that promo code CLNS to get a first sign deposit match up to $100, and you can watch yourself win some real money in real time. 
I know you guys have seen this player before. Gallinari is second on our list here because, of course, he did play for the Boston Celtics at one time or another, but unfortunately, he did sustain an injury. So he got shipped out to the Wizards to obtain Chris Stapps for Zingas. And look, Gallinari was super excited to play for Boston. Why wouldn't he be? Anybody being traded to the northern city right now should be floored. Excuse me. Excited. I think floored means the opposite of that. Never mind. He provides a bigger body than Sam Hauser. I do think Sam Hauser is great, but he only shoots threes. He's shown a little bit of ball movement here, but I really want that kind of dynamic offensive player and he could potentially defend the fours because he's a little bit thicker than Sam Hauser is. So if you look at what he's done so far this season, I'm not looking at to anything to be super flashy here for a guy coming off the bench. Seven points per game is fine. Three rebounds per game definitely helps Jason Tatum take the take the edge off a little bit when he would come in the ballgame. And, and his shooting percentages, not the best, but look at the Detroit, excuse me, the Washington Wizards this season. They're terrible. So when your team is that bad, it's going to be very hard for you to be able to get up there and actually play well. Overall, I do think that it's tough when you got somebody on the Detroit Pistons like this, but overall, Mike Muscala is another player who's on the Pistons as well, and they're just kind of trying to get through this season, hopefully put some wins up there and make their name known in the trade market. Because as of right now, the only player on the Detroit Pistons that's really working night in and night out is Cade Cunningham. Everybody else is trying to put their stats up there to be able to be traded. And I think both Gallinari and Muscala have just been dealt to Detroit, which is tough. That's a tough city to be dealt with this season. And I doubt either one's going to be on that roster at the end of the year, which is why I think Brad Stevens would be super smart to either pick up either of these players, especially Gallinari, who never really got to make his presence known in Boston, and then Muscala, who's kind of up there in the same realm as Gallinari. But what position do you think Boston needs to improve the most? We put out a video yesterday talking about, excuse me, yes, yesterday talking about how they can use a little bit more depth at the wing, especially with injuries coming for Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown throughout the season. So we think the wing depth could definitely use a little bit more help there. But what position do you guys think? While you guys are typing that down below, let's talk about Alec Burks, a name that has been around for quite some time through multiple organizations, I might add. I liked watching them in New York, but now, of course, he's also with the Pistons as well. This is kind of where everybody seems to go this season. But look at what Burks has been doing in the past four seasons. I love his points coming off the bench, first and foremost. 11.5 points could really be a difference maker, as the other night when the Celtics did beat the Raptors, there was a combined 17 points from the bench. Alec Burks alone has 11.5. His assists are fine, his field goal percentage is not very good, and his three-point percentage, it's all right. It has been better, as you guys can see, but like I said, they suck this year. So, when you put him on a team that doesn't suck, I think he could really improve. And unfortunately, we do have a little bit of bias here at Celtics today, as our producer Smitty has just always been a Burks kind of guy. He can't help himself when he made this video. He's like, Celtics fans need to know this player coming off the bench could be beneficial for the Boston Celtics. He just gets buckets. He just gets buckets <laughs> at the end of the day. Alec Burks can go out there and get you a bucket in the second unit, and I think the Celtics should give him a, give him a call if he gets bought out. Where that voice came from, I have no idea. But that's why you guys tune in to Celtics today. We're full of surprises here. But nonetheless, I do agree with Smitty. He's a consistent player coming off the bench for the Boston Celtics. And I will reiterate one more time, we're not looking for a superstar here. We've got plenty of them. You're looking for a consistent playmaker off the bench. Which does bring me to our last player in the buyout market, Kelly Olynyk. We have made numerous videos talking about whether or not Kelly Olynyk should come back to Boston. Kelly Olynyk has addressed these rumors and said he always will have love for Boston in his heart. But here's the problem. The Utah Jazz are actually starting to pop off. Look at their last few games in the sense of the teams they're beating, how bad they're beating them by in points. They're beating the Pacers. They're beating the Pistons. They're beating the 76ers. They're beating the Bucks. The last loss the Jazz had when we made this video was the Boston Celtics. So, Kelly Olenek may want to stay in Utah, but they may also be a little hesitant to get rid of Kelly Olenek. Because like I said, they're not super flashy, but they do numbers that help the team. 
eight points per game. Five rebounds per game is fantastic. Draymond Green right now is averaging about 5.7. Assists per game is four and a half. His field goal and three point percentage, oh my gosh, these are phenomenal for Kelly Olenek. Rocking that headband since God knows when. He's doing his damn thing in Utah right now, which is why I think it's time to come back to Boston. Be the missing piece to help them get to Banner 18, especially to have a scoring fill-in for KP and Al Horford. Like I said, Luke Cornett has been improving. Will I always accept a player over Luke Cornett? Yes, I will stand by that. I do think Kelly Olenek could definitely help. Help more than hurt. But overall, name a buyout candidate you'd want Boston to target. It can be the five that we talked about on this video. It can be somebody we haven't mentioned before. But nonetheless, we would not be Celtics today unless you guys put your input in as well. So go on ahead and comment that down below. And look, if you guys enjoyed the show, if you guys have enjoyed Celtics today, just go on ahead and hit that like button because we are going to be live tonight against the Spurs. We're going to be live on Friday as well against the Nuggets. We want you guys to be a part of it. All you guys have to do for us. Hit that like button.